Michael Clam here with Jeff Walt at the San Diego Public Library, downtown San Diego. Looking forward to talking to Jeff about all things poetry, the San Diego Poetry Annual, the Cowett Prize, uh, which uh, submissions just opened up. So yes. we're looking forward to getting in lots of great poetry from all around for the Cowett Prize. And submissions also just opened up for the San Diego Poetry Annual. So we're looking forward to those poems coming in to publish in our annual here in San Diego. I'm uh, going to talk to Jeff a little bit about his inspiration. Uh, before we get started, though, I definitely want to thank the San Diego mm -hmm. Public Library for giving us all the spaces that we've used so far, including the Neil Morgan Auditorium. And uh, I want to thank the staff here, too. Got to thank Kent Tran, uh, Sherwood Hartwell, Rachel. Thank you so much for all the work, the editing, and all the camera work. And Anthony Blackshire, who represents the San Diego Poetry Annual and the San Diego Entertainment and Arts Guild. Anthony's directing and also helping out with, with editing. So thanks to all of you. Uh, the library supporting poetry in San Diego for so long, uh, we couldn't do without you. Uh, thanks so much to the library system. Uh, so Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So you, uh, you uh, let's start with the Cowet, actually. Uh, you are the coordinator. Yes. And uh, how does it work? So if somebody wants to win this $1,000 prize, uh, what's the process for doing that? Well, basically, we open every June 15th, so just a few days ago, and we close October 15th. So they go to the submittable page and pay the $15 per poem. The rest is up to chance. Uh, how important is it to follow the guidelines and how will they know uh, just by the guidelines if their poem or the work that they're sending in is qualified to be eligible for the Calic Prize? Well, there's no, there's no theme, there's no word limit, so they could be living anywhere and submit a thousand page epic poem. Well, yeah, haiku. within reasons. Haiku, yeah, we do get haiku. Oh. And actually sometimes people do, uh, they'll do a series of haiku. Now that would be extraordinary to win the Cowboy Prize with one haiku poem. A thousand dollars. Imagine the power of that <laughs> poem. I would love to read that A thousand dollars. And who's the judge this year? I know you have an all-star lineup of judges coming up. Uh, yes. Our first poet laureate, Ron Salisbury, was judged last year. Yes. And it was great to have a poet laureate now, and we're looking forward to San Diego's future of poet laureates. And who's our judge this year? Our judge this year is Dorian Locks, and she's you know, everybody knows who Dorianne is. Uh, in fact, she was married to Ron mm -hmm. briefly. Uh, she was up for the Pulitzer Prize, I think it was last year or the year before. Mm. And uh, so what, what is it about Dorianne that um, made you go, hey, I want to invite her? And how do you find all these folks, too? Are you just well, reaching first, out and talking to them? Or is it just the Cowet itself that gets uh, involved? Well, to be honest, it is the Cowet a little bit because uh, there are people that knew Steve. I don't think Steve was super famous in his lifetime, but he was definitely known and known in California. And um, Dorianne was his student. Mm. And because this is our first year having a national judge with some prominence like Dorianne, you know, I just think that she's going to attract a lot of uh, people, and she was Steve's student. Yeah, you know, I hear this a lot when you mention Steve's name. That ha it happens all the time. I was his student. I loved uh, Steve Cowett's classes, and I know he wrote uh, in the palm of your hand, right? Yes. A manual for day-to-day uh, -day writing. And I think probably the message was just get there, do it, sit down, start writing. And that might have been his style in the classroom. Yes, you know. I was a student of his. Briefly, I was in a workshop with him when he died. Oh, is that right? Not, he didn't die in the workshop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that but, would something to remember. But, uh, you know, because he died in his sleep at home. Mm -hmm. But I was part of a group workshop at San Diego Writers, Inc. when he passed away. Yeah, and uh, what do you think it is about Cowett that got so many people writing, and not just <laughs> got them writing, but put them in the position to be the kind of writer who's winning awards, winning fellowships, you know, getting into sort of the poetry limelight? Yeah, well, he, um, he just had a friendly, cherubic way about him, and I think the biggest thing is that he never thought of himself as separate from the students. Like he would actually 
be out at readings. He would read, he would read with them. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, I remember him clearly saying that before, that he was the, uh, he's not above them, he's not below them, he's with them. Yeah. And I think people really responded to that. Um, I think Dorian was his student back in the 80s. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I also contacted another judge, Ellen Bass, and I wasn't sure if I would hear back from her. And she wrote back and said, anything to do with Steve, I'll be happy to do it. Ah, uh, there you go, yeah. Maybe like a true poet of the people. Yeah, so that's yeah. how I'm getting some of the people. Yeah, of, just because of Steve. Of note to right. judge. Yeah. I went out to Portrero, I hung out with Steve for a while and talked all about poetry. I was specifically interested in uh, Pablo Neruda. And I think maybe one of the things that Steve did was he, in the same vein as Pablo Neruda's poetry, like he sent the message that we can write about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, pick a moment, <laughs> get started. You know, it's right there, it's right in the palm of your yes. hand. Uh, so how did you get started? Like what, uh, I guess, were you a person who started writing poetry in elementary school? Was it a high school experience? Did you fall in love with somebody? I know you're into like John Waters movies, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I am into John Waters movies. Um, in college, I, I went to college and I was like, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to study. And I really liked to write. And I was writing short stories at the time. And then, uh, there was a contest for uh, a poetry contest. And <laughs> it was just an undergraduate contest. I think it was called the Bob Hoffman Memorial Award or something. Anyway, I wrote a poem and the first poem I ever wrote won that contest. Ah. So it was a big ego boost. And then I took a creative writing class to write short stories and the guy was a poet. Mm -hmm. And so, there was no writing short stories. Yeah. <laughs> it was all poetry, so I had to do it. I had signed up, and so I stuck with it and took the class. There you go. Uh, we were just chatting with Rudy Francisco, and he had a similar experience. He wrote a poem in high school, and the same thing happened. He got this reaction, and that sort of boost to his ego kind of got him started. Yeah. It made him think, okay, I can do this. You and know? I think that's what contests yeah. at their heart can really do for people. Indeed. How do you feel about slam? Do you, how do you feel about the performance side of poetry? Uh, kind of performance in general, but uh, the performance side of poetry where you're being scored? Well, I, I've only gone to one slam, mm -hmm. and it was up in Escondido. In fact, I took a local gal, Trish Duggar. Mm -hmm. Trish, we, the Trish the dish. Trish the dish. We picked her up at her house and took her. I didn't know about the scoring. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know. I just thought people just got up and performed. Right. And that was it. Did you go? Did you? Uh, yeah, well, uh, Trish won. She did? Yeah, right. she hadn't imagine. been there in years. Yeah. And she won third place. And they, one thing that I thought was really cool is they passed around a bucket, a hat or something, and everybody just put money in it. And the winners got the money. So she left there that night with like $175. Nice. For what, three poems or just one? A poem? Well, a poem. yeah, well, she came in third, so she had to read a few. Yeah, I think what's lovable and epic about Trish is uh, her sense of humor. And she's also, she's telling a story in her poems. She's telling about herself. They're very reflective, yes. very much like memoir poetry yes. almost. But she's got an epic sense of humor. And I think the same is true for your work. Uh, how important is it to, um, uh, to use that as almost as a device, you know? To, well, even though you might be talking about something heavy, a heavy experience in your life, or what's going on in the world, how important is humor in your writing? Well, I, I don't set out to write any type of humor poetry, though it does exist. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there are humor poetry contests. Uh, I like this sort of tongue-in-cheek humor uh, in a poem, you know, irony and those sorts of things, but uh, I think you have to have a sense of humor in life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or I have to have a sense of humor in life, and, and that translates into just how I approach poetry. 
Yeah. Do you have? Do you just sit down and go? Do you have a a daily routine? Because I was looking at your CV and I thought if I were a true slam poet, I would memorize it <laughs> and I would just recite it out loud. But it would take the whole thirty minutes. We've got to do that. Uh, so for the folks listening uh, right now, watching right now, uh, give us a sense of the day in the life of Jeff Walt. How do you get so much poetry out there? Well, and winning it, prizes. Too. It looks like a lot, but I started. I mean, that's like if you were to look at my website and see some of the stuff that, that's there, uh, things that I've won or whatever, it's like 20 years of, of work. Mm -hmm. And I guess to answer the question, the biggest thing for me is when I wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. I will uh, read one of those books, maybe the one that Dorian did with Kim Adonisio called The Poet's Companion. Mm -hmm. I might read Steve's book, uh, you know, just a little section, just something to get me started in the day. I might still even be in bed, you know. Yeah. So I keep the books right there. So it's a reminder, first thing in the morning, I have to do poetry. And so that'll be like the kickstart. Right. And then in an ideal world, I do four hours of submitting, reading, writing, revising, submitting. So it's like a focused, and those are the four things. So if people actually say to me, what do you do? I always say read, write, revise, submit. Submit, of course, means to journals and mm -hmm. to uh, contests. Mm -hmm. I like contests. <laughs> I've always entered them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's good feedback. Sometimes they'll even write you a little note. Yeah. Do you have a, um, a sort of a pride and joy contest that you won or an accomplishment that made you jump for joy when you got the notice? Well, the first contest I ever won was the New Millennium mm -hmm. Poetry Prize, mm -hmm. which was pretty big. And it was $1,000. Nice. So yes. I was very excited. In fact, I went out and bought a pound of bacon and fried it <laughs> <laughs> and ate so almost all of bacon. it. I never ate bacon. So I was like, <laughs> I had to have the bacon. Um, and then probably the most recent is the uh, award that I got for my book, which is the Housatonic Book Award yeah. given by the Western Connecticut State University MFA program. Mm -hmm. So with that, the publisher actually submitted the book and then the administrators and uh, people there actually made the decision and uh, I'm happy that it won because now next January I'll go there, teach in their MFA program and I'll get the thousand dollar award. <laughs> nice. um, and it's nice because they give you a $500 honorarium. So yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. So you read and teach a class. You're there for a few days. Yeah, you give a reading. Connecticut you give a reading and um, uh, teach a three-hour, they call it a master class. Are you going to encourage them to do that in the morning? Uh, <laughs> pick, keep, a, keep an anthology or a collection next to you and uh, get that inspiration first thing? That's, it's good advice, I think. I've, yeah. I've done it naturally, you know, and yeah. I've never even thought of suggesting it to someone else but you yeah gave, you gave me a cd a while a long time ago it was uh kim adonisio's i think it's called my black angel yes and we listened to that in the car i was driving emma to high tech high when she was like a junior in high school and we'd listen to it in the car and i feel like during that time i was writing a lot because kim's voice like yes. she's such a good writer with few words short poems she can say so much and then the music background that bluesy jazz yes, that's happening she's that relatable CD. Yeah, totally. You know, and a, and a, and a consummate poet, a performer yes. for sure. Uh, so you have uh, some other inspirations too, like Mary Oliver. Is that right? Well, I'm not the biggest Mary Oliver fan. Yeah. One thing that I do love about the poets that I love mm -hmm. is that I can see the craft in their work. Right. So uh, she's crafty, huh. and I also look to her for inspiration with. Uh, um, subject matter. Uh, yeah, I brought a Mary Oliver poem and uh, 
I think it's one of her more amazing poems. Let's read it. Can yeah, you read yeah, it to us? Yeah. I will give it a shot. All right. All right, it's called The Summer Day. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass. The one who is eating sugar out of my hand. Who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down. Who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do not know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day long. Tell me, what else should I have done? Does everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Idle time, right? Yeah, well, you Don't know, this year for the Cowet, it was interesting because I thought I wanted to uh, inspire people uh, for the contest, so I sent out through our listserv to all the people that have entered in the past. I uh, sent them a prompt from Dorian Locks. So the one that she gave me was, uh, she said, tell the people to look at a thing in spring. And so it was springtime and uh, you know, I sent that out. But this poem sort of applies to that. Uh, she's looking at a thing very specifically mm -hmm. and she brings it like right down to just uh, its wings, the prayer, uh, but of course, then she expands it with all the questions mm. and asked you that sort of childish question, you know, what, what are you going to do with your life, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And even this question about defining purpose, you know, what defines a purposeful day? Why can't lying in the grass and re really looking at something, maybe even sitting down to write a poem? You know, how do you do this? Do you, because I've, I've written a little bit about downtime, the virtues of downtime, yes. but you're also a very busy poet. You've got a four hour regimen and a structure that you work in as a writer to be successful, you know? So I feel she's going after that day to day inspiration to be fulfilled in life, right? And that's where some of the best poems are, Yeah, I think. Yeah. You, uh, do you agree that uh, we can write about anything? Like we read a poem about what we're doing right now? Um, I, I do believe that uh, mm -hmm. because before as my own practice, I, what I would try to do is uh, find a poem in every moment. And once I was standing in line at the post office and I even called the poem standing in line at the post office. There you go. <laughs> you know, because it's the perfect place to write a poem. Dude, there's so much that can go on and the, pe the people watching is incredible. <laughs> yes, I mean, and you have to wait forever. Mm -hmm. So you have like an hour to write. You got the time, right? You got your phone. You got that you computer got your phone. right there in your pocket. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Will you read one of your poems? Yes. Yeah. And actually the one that I brought uh, the reason I brought it is because uh, I grew up in rural Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. very poor. Um, I was raised on welfare and food stamps. Uh, my mother was never married. <clears throat> she had three different kids to three different guys. So, she, you know, people in town thought of her as a loose woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but tragically, she was an alcoholic. Mm. And when I say alcoholic, I don't mean like a glamorous, like you see on the sitcoms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, she was like really tragic. She never worked mm. as long as she was with us. So <laughs> she was sort of a sad case. But anyway, so this poem is called Soot. And it was made into a broadside. Uh, which came out from Littoral Press, uh, which I thought was a pretty nice job. Mm. Um, 
Anyway, it's called soot. And again, I grew up in coal country, and this is sort of an homage to my people. <laughs> so soot. Down deep they dug, the men of my family. Shovels and picks, backs bent. Nights on their grave faces. Monday blues black every bituminous day of the week. Sex and scriptures, colliery talk. Grubs, smuts, soot of the earth. Uncles, cousins, stripped, mind, blasted. Saturday, jukebox, schlitz. Sunday, penance, blessed. Paychecks already spent. Into the shaft, lung by lung, down a song song went. Did you and, want to, oh, sorry. Go, no, go, go ahead. For it, go for it. <laughs> oh, uh, you want to read another one? Uh, I can, yeah. Yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, I did bring another yeah, one. Absolutely. Um, what I was trying to do with this poem is uh, play up the idea that the image can do a lot of work in the poem. Uh, so there's not a lot of, uh, so you almost just get the idea or the feeling of the poem from the images themselves. I don't really talk a lot in the poem per se. So uh, the poem is called All Day. I heard Mrs. Lee scream, kill me, kill me from inside her house and I did not move. At noon, the dogs in the neighborhood began barking. Hear something, did they, that they couldn't bear? The television said E. coli lurks in my laundry and kitchen sponge, and toxic waste has leaked into the drinking water. A bright disk with many lights hovered in the afternoon sky above the backyard fence. A small child came to my door and asked if I wanted to buy its chance. Yes, more chances, I said and took 20. Now between the blinds, bats start to swoop nooses. The sharp moon appears, machete swung high. So a little bit of an ominous poem. Mm. A little paranoia in there. A little paranoia? Yeah. Well, just because you're not paranoid doesn't mean they aren't out to get you. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> did you um, did you come to San Diego to get as far away from the coal mines as possible? Were you were you because you came to the other side of the of, of the of the country? Yeah. yeah. Did you did you leave there and come here? Uh, not directly. No. Um, I got my MFA at Goddard College, so mm -hmm. I was up in Vermont for mm -hmm. a while, and I loved it there, so I stayed. Yeah. Um, but it snows in Vermont. <laughs> I don't like snow, so <laughs> yeah, so I came in search of the sun. Yeah, semi arid desert, right? Yeah. 72 degrees in San Diego. You can't beat uh, it. Closest to heaven you can get, <laughs> for sure. Um, do you think uh, poems need to tell a complete story? Because, uh, you know, do you think a poem, you know, because we've had that conversation quite a bit when we're uh, talking to other poets about narrative poetry, but specifically about getting to the story, getting to the point of the poem. Do you think a poem has to have a, sort of a beginning, a middle, and an end, and tell a complete story? Uh, to some degree, I think it does have to have those elements, but uh, there are plenty of poems I like that don't always make sense or add up, mm -hmm. you know? And it's fun to share them with people and say, like, and just admit and say, like, I don't know what's going on here, but I love this. Yeah. <laughs> For the Cowett Prize are, uh, so, so you can submit any kind of poem. Yes, and it any can be genre. Any length, any genre. It can come from any part of the world, yeah. right? So there isn't, there was a theme though, you said. You there said is no theme. Oh, oh, I thought you had said no. that she put out the, a theme about the springtime. Oh, that, that was a prompt. That was Yeah, Dorian okay. put out that springtime prompt, put out a prompt just okay. to get people writing. But they don't have to use that prompt no, necessarily. No. Okay. All right, and then how do they get those poems in? What do they do? They go through submittable? Is through right? submittable, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So it's a pretty easy process. It's yeah. a very easy process. In fact, I, I looked and we've already got submissions for this Already, year. Already? Yeah. First day? It yeah. It opened two days ago, right? Yeah, two what days ago. 16th, 17th? Yeah. Uh, 15th. Yeah, the 15th. 15th, so, so yeah. two days. 
Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. There you go. You're gonna get a lot this year. How many submissions came in last year, approximately? A lot. A lot. A yeah. lot. Um, it's the most we've every year. It's just it become grows. it grows. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, a lot. Part of that is your work, and I have to say, uh, for San Diego, for the Poetry Annual, because oh. you're also a regional editor, and, uh, and you, ha you do that work as well. And so everybody knows if you want to send a poem to Jeff, you can do that, right? Yeah. They can send those that poetry directly to you, and it can be a poem for the Cowit. Do it through submittables. Through submittable, But if yeah. you want a poem in the San Diego Poetry Annual, they can yes. send it directly to you, and you're uh, linked there on the San Diego Poetry Annual website. Yeah, and all the other regional editors are there. That's right, so they can pick an editor, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I want to thank you, Jeff. Thank you yeah. so much for coming in and doing this with us. Uh, you are so important for San Diego, mm -hmm. and it's an honor to have you here in town and working on the Cowet through the San Diego thank Poetry you. Annual. Yes. And uh, thanks for coming down and having a conversation with us. It's always <laughs> good to see you. All right, cheers, mate. <laughs>